Well, hi there, boys and girls. We are live in first period today, recording a video over optimization. Would anyone like to give a shout out? What up, though? That was Richard. Happy hey, Humza. There's a happy Humza. Happy Humzy. <laughs> All right, so uh, we're going to take a look at sort of what I call a fluff question, but it's a very good practice in calculus. And um, we're trying to minimize something in this question. We've got a swimmer that is two miles in the ocean, so he's two miles away from the shore. And he's wanting to get to this town. This town is three miles down the coast. Now, I don't like how this is labeled here. That three is not the distance from this corner to where the, in, the line intersects. That three is the distance all the way to town. So I'm going to make that more clear here. That three is that entire distance. All right, and so the question says the swimmer needs to swim to the shore and then walk along the shore. He can swim at two miles per hour and walk at four miles per hour. To what point should he swim along the shoreline so that the time it takes to get to the town is a minimum? So I am looking for this x distance that's going to be somewhere between zero and three for him to swim to the shore so that he can reach town in the minimum amount of time. He probably got to go save the princess. So I'm going to label everything else on my picture in terms of x. This last part of that line would be 3 minus x. And then I've got a right triangle, so I can use the Pythagorean theorem. And I can label my hypotenuse as the square root of x squared plus 4. So I've labeled everything that I can in my picture. And then I'm going to ask myself a question. Self what are we trying to minimize or what are we trying to maximize? We are trying to minimize time. And so that means I need to come up with a time equation. So I gotta come up with a time equals something. So I have to ask myself, what am I minimizing? I'm trying to minimize time. So we've got two parts here. We've got some time swimming and we've got some time walking. So I'm gonna come up with the equation for time and you need to know your dirt equation. If you don't know your dirt equation, there it is. Distance equals rate times time. And so my time equation would be a distance divided by a rate. Distance divided by rate. So swimming, my distance is the square root of x squared plus four. And the rate that we're swimming is right here at two. So I can set my time up as the square root of x squared plus 4, that's distance, divided by my rate of 2. Now that's just the time spent swimming. Then I'm going to add to that the time that we spend walking. And the time that we spend walking would be the distance, 3 minus x, divided by my rate of 4. So this will probably be the most difficult thing for you to do is try and get an equation in one variable that will give you what you're looking for. I'm looking, for, I'm looking to minimize time. So here's my time equation. Now if you want to minimize anything, you get that thing and you find its derivative and you set it equal to zero. And we're going to do that on the calculator with this example. So I'm going to find t prime equal to zero. I am also, for a minimum, going to make sure that my t prime crosses the x-axis in a special way. Does anyone know what that way is? From negative to positive, and that was Melody gets the answer for that, and I've got some other people over there doing the correct hand motion. We need t prime to equal zero from below to above. And if we get that, then we know that we have a minimum. So I'm gonna go grab a hold of my calculator, and we're gonna see if we can do that. So we're going to pull up my virtual TI calculator, which is my TI emulator that I got, I paid for. <coughs> All right, so I'm going to go from, from the home screen. I'm going to go to F3 and I want to differentiate. You can also get to differentiate by doing second A. And I want to differentiate the equation the square root of x squared plus 4. Well, I didn't get my x in there. x, there we go, squared plus 4. And I'm dividing that by what? 2, two divided by 2. And then plus, I'm going to put this in parentheses, 3 minus x 
what's that being divided by? Four. Okay. That was a good four, Richard. Nice manly voice, too. By the way, if you have... I didn't actually give Richard's permission or Humsey's to actually say their name, or Melody's to say their name out loud on the video. And this is live, so they can sue me later. <laughs> All right, so I want the derivative of that equation. And so my calculator does the derivative for me, and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to grab a hold of this expression, and I'm going to copy it, because I want to see a pretty picture of this derivative. I want to make sure this derivative crosses the x-axis in the right way. So I'm going to go to y equals. I'm going to clear all of this stuff out. And I'm going to paste my derivative in there. And I'm going to graph it. And that's not a great window, but we can tell that the, that the graph goes from below to above. Now, what do I need to find? I need to find where that happens. I need to find where that happens. I can do that from the graph screen, but I'm just going to do it from the home screen. I'm going to come back to the home screen. I'm going to hit F2. That's where all my algebra is. And I want to solve by hitting Enter. That equation, I'll go up and grab it and hit Enter. I want to solve that equation equals zero with respect to x. And I'm going to close parentheses. I've verified that it's a minimum because the derivative crossed in the right way. And of course, this calculator is a show off. It will show you a perfect answer if possible. I'd like to get a decimal version of that. So I'm going to hit diamond and then enter, and that will give me the decimal version for that. And that's 1.1547. Is that the answer that we're supposed to get? Okay. All right, when t equals 1.1547, or I don't, I, don't, I don't know, it shouldn't be t. That's when t prime, that's when x equals. So we're going to come back up here and say when x equals 1.1547. So that's this point we need to shoot for. And we verify that it's a minimum by looking at the graph. Sort of a fluff question. I can't imagine ever being out there swimming and imagining, hey, that's a rocky shore, doing some calculus in my swimsuit. No. Okay, so now we're going to answer a question that has definitely been answered by people. They, we are going to make a can, and we would like to use the least amount of metal. Why? Because we want to minimize the cost to make this can. Typical can of 12 ounces. Um, we've, we're going to need to use some conversions, though. We want to minimize the least amount of metal. That means I want to minimize surface area. I want to make the surface area a minimum. That way I don't have to spend as much... Um, spend as much money <laughs> on the materials. Um, believe it or not, the stuff that's inside the can costs less than the can itself. That's true for pretty much anything, um, especially like styrofoam cups. That's ridiculous. Anyway, so 12 ounces is my volume. Volume equals 12 ounces, but I need to convert this into something like cubic centimeters because my radius and height are going to be in terms of centimeters. Luckily for us, I've got our conversion here. 12 ounces is 355 milliliters, about, and that's exactly 355 cubic centimeters. So I know that my volume, which is pi r squared h, is equal to 355 cubic centimeters. Now, the problem that I have with my surface area is how many variables that I'm dealing with in my surface area. I'm dealing with a radius and a height, and that's two variables, and I really don't want to have two variables over there. I only want to have one. So I'm going to use a substitution for either R or H to plug in here. Now, if I want to substitute for R or H, which one of those variables would I like to solve for? Would I like to solve for R by dividing by H and pi and taking a square root? would I like to solve for h by just dividing by pi r squared? That answer is probably pretty self-explanatory. We just want to divide by pi r squared and get that h equals 355 divided by pi r squared. I can now use that to substitute it into my surface area equation. So my surface area equation is going to be 2 pi r squared plus 2 pi r times this h, which we know is 355 over pi r squared. Now I want to stop for just a second and ask what we've done. We have come up with an equation. 
Why did we do that? Well, because we wanted to minimize something. We wanted to minimize surface area. So you've got to come up with an equation for surface area if you want to minimize it. How do we minimize things in calculus or maximize things? We have to find its derivative and we have to set it equal to zero. And for a minimum, we need it to cross the x-axis in a special way. It needs to be from below to above. I'm going to simplify this second term before I ask my calculator for the derivative. But my surface area is going to be 2 pi r squared plus, are those pi's going to cancel? Yeah, and one of those r's will also cancel. What's 2 times 355? Go, go, go. Tell me. Someone. Here. It. Let's hear it. 710. Charlie got it first. At least I, at least I heard Charlie first. 710 over r. So that's my surface area equation. I am now going to ask my calculator to find the derivative of that equation. I'm going to graph it and make sure that it is a legitimate minimum, and then I can figure out my dimensions. So let's grab special calculator, and let's go to F3, differentiate. Again, you can just hit second 8 to get to differentiate. I'm going to use x's instead of r's, although you can use r's. You just have to do comma r at the end. 2 pi x squared didn't get the squared in there, 2 pi x squared, plus 7 10 divided by x. With respect to x, close parentheses, enter. So that is my derivative. I'm going to copy and paste that into y equals and make sure I've got a legit minimum. Is the derivative crossing the x-axis in the correct way? So copy, paste, no, didn't paste, paste, there we go, and graph. And I'll sing to you again, I promise you. I've got the eye of the tie, see it does it. <laughs> there it is, the graph is going from below to above, that's a legit minimum. Now all I have to do is find out what that special value is. That special value is going to go to F2, solve. I want my derivative. Just hit enter. I'll see. Okay. Equals zero, comma, there you go, comma x, close parentheses, Enter and it's probably going to again try and the calculator just shows off. It's it's so I'm gonna hit diamond enter. My decimal is 3.83722 and is that this is what I got earlier. Now that's the radius and it says I've got to find the dimensions. So I'm gonna also have to find the height, but that shouldn't be too hard because my height is given to me as 355 over pi r squared. So what we did is we found SA prime equals zero. Mr. Westfall showed up on the video. SA prime equals zero. This happened when R equals 3.83722. And if you plug it back into this pretty little equation right there, you get H equals 7.67441. So that's the dimensions of the can you are shooting for if you want to minimize your cost. And uh, thank you very much, first period. Any last to Ross for anybody? What up, though, with that capital? Yeah, all right, I like it. And I will see you guys, not really tomorrow, but that's how I end it always, so you better stay consistent. I'll see you guys tomorrow.